begin. Uh, this is from somebody you probably know in a church, I mean in a school uh, nearby here. I blanked it out so you won't see it, but uh, it from the librarian, we support LGB. You know, I'm old enough to remember when it was just LGB. Yeah. And now it's not only lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, queer. I don't even know what the I and the A stand for. Idiots. <laughs> okay, so we, we can make jokes about this, but this is our children. And so they have sent this out. Hello, everyone. Over the next few weeks, we will be celebrating all that plus Pride Month. In the Library Media Center, there are many books that feature amazing characters, authors, and stories that recognize this community. If you'd like to learn more about that community literature on our shelves, click on the picture on the right, students who complete the time to climb, the time to climb game will earn 30 live school points. Doesn't that sound like fun? Now, there's a reason why the perversion of pedophilia and and all of this is coming. So let me back up. This is all extra. Do you know why we're going to Mars? Do you know why we've gone to Mars? To prove that there could be life someplace else besides the Earth where Christians say God placed life in the universe. Okay? That's why we've gone to Mars. We need to find water and say there could be life there. It's not just the Earth. And there's life all over the universe. It's not just this planet. That's what's driving that. That's what's behind it. And that's what also pushes the pedophilia and the LGB and all of it. Everything not God. Everything contrary to God. Everything against the book. You know, we, uh, we uh, canceled Dr. Seuss. Right? We canceled Dr. Seuss. Wait until they read what's in the Bible. I mean, there are some sexually, I don't even what you, they, this, it's a historically accurate truth of what was done. Noah and his daughters and uh, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. Wait till they find out about that. Wait till somebody, and that's where they're headed. It's the cancel culture who will not stop until they've canceled God. That's what all of this is about. Because Satan is behind all of that. So, before we get into the actual Bible study that I was going to do, I wanted to give you a word about Babel. Because it ties into all that we've been talking about. So Babel, there were some characteristic things about Babel that are going to recur. We're seeing them recur. So let's look at Genesis chapter 11 and see what took place there under Nimrod. That's my favorite name for people who don't use their turn signal. <laughs> Just so you'll know. If you don't use your turn signal, that's what I call you. Uh, Nimrod did some... He was a hunter. And indications are, he actually may have been, what that may mean is he was a hunter of men. He wasn't just a great hunter, but he was a hunter of men. Which the Antichrist, which he's a, a type of the coming Antichrist. Nimrod is a type of the coming Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be a hunter of men also. Right? All those who will not bow down and worship the image of the beast, they will seek out to kill them. If you don't have the number of the beast tattooed on your arm or your forehead, you will not be able to buy or sell. And if you don't bow down and worship, you're under a death sentence because the Antichrist will hunt you down, just like Nimrod did back in his day. So, verse 1, 
And the whole earth was of one language. And that's really the reason why I'm going to share what I'm going to share with you. Uh, the earth was of one language. The whole earth. So we've been talking about the, the Antichrist is going to bring together uh, a, he's going to be a political power. He's going to bring about an economic unification, a, a globalism, and he's going to bring about a religious, a spiritual unification. That will be one world religion. So all these things are coming. And so we have a precursor to that in Genesis chapter 11. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. If you were here last week, and if you're listening to this on uh, the internet, you can go find last week's study. We had that uh, strange prophecy in Zechariah how uh, these two women were placed in this bushel basket. And a lead talent was placed on it and was sealed up. And they were taken on the wings of storks, unclean animals. They were wickedness. They were evil. And they're taken, it says in that prophecy, to the land of Shinar. And they're set there, and that becomes a base for them. Okay? The more I remember about that and see what's shaping up, the more it makes perfect sense. I believe the place of Shinar in Iraq right now, Babel, is going to become the center. Now, I could be wrong about that. It may be a worldwide thing, and that not be, this, it all may be completely symbolic, but it's symbolic of something, right? So when somebody says, oh, well, that's symbolic language over in Revelation and Daniel. Yeah, it's symbolic of something. You know, there's something under that symbolism. And so the land of Shinar is going to be that place. And they said one to another in verse 3, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. Now that's significant. <coughs> Who made stone? God. Who made brick? Man. That's the picture. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower. Did you ever notice that? It's not just a tower. It's a city. They built a city dedicated to this purpose and a tower. We all know about the tower. That's the famous thing. But it says they built a city and a tower which the children of men builded. I'm sorry. Go to let us build a city in verse 4 and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So they built this tower to become a portal into heaven or out of heaven, probably in their mind. And, and what they had intended was both ways. But certainly the ancients believed that there were certain places that were portals where, where beings came from another dimension, from uh, the other world, and they came into this world. That's what the ancients believed. And this is what Nimrod was trying to do. Okay, Whether he got it done or not, I don't know. But that's what he had in mind. And verse 5. Um, God is going to scatter them upon the face of the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Evidently, that's a bad thing. You can debate and argue with God all you want to. He said don't do it. There should be a division of black and white. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about racial division and KKK and all that kind of foolishness. I'm saying that the races are God's design. They are a good thing. They're not a bad thing. So the people are one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. That they may, be, they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. 
and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Okay. So I discovered some information this week that you can't build the whole doctrine on it, but you see it shaping up in the world, and it makes you go, hmm, okay? <clears throat> A step beyond interesting. So how many of you have computers that you get on the Internet? Okay. Pretty much no matter where you go in the world, you've got people like that, right? And when you get ready to go search for something, you're probably going to type in www, right? Well, there's actually a reason for that. The original internet did not have it. You had to have the HTTP slash comma colon all that. You had to be almost an academic, and that's what it was developed for. But this guy came along and developed www is, has become a language. It is actually a uniform language for which no matter China, Russia, wherever you go, the WWW enables you to communicate. Okay? This was developed by a scientist at CERN. We'll talk about that. It allows the entire world to be using this same language. What was Babel? What was Nimrod? What was that city and tower all about? They had all come together with one language. Okay. And they said, Pastor, you're not going to build a doctrine on that, are you? No, I'm just saying, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Further, CERN, uh, Switzerland, I believe, it's actually, uh, I, I think it's Switzerland, Cer Geneva, yeah. So CERN is the location of the Large Hadron Collider. Now the Large Hadron Collider, here's a picture of it. It's actually, and actually this round circular thing that they have built is on two countries. And what the design of it is, they've designed this so they can shoot electrons around it and do it so fast that they can get two going in the opposite direction, bang them into each other, and let's see what happens. You know, that reminds me when I was about 10. And I'd get some firecrackers and I'd say, huh. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you did this. And you know, I've got all my figures and I didn't die. And they didn't have any rules and regulations back then. We had mules and black cats. Anyway, so I digress. So they, they do this with the intent to smash the electrons into each other in such a speed that it completely at a, a quantum level break them apart. They think they will be able to find what they say is the God particle. They're looking for what they call, now they could have called it many things, but they think they could find the God particle, which I don't want to get off on all that. But this is huge, this thing that they've built. In fact, they have made something so large and so much money has been dumped into this that they could have literally paid all of our bills for probably the next 10 years. All of us? Money's not a problem in this world. Okay? Out in front of CERN, the buildings, they've got two big buildings, and, and out in front of this, they've got this statue. It, so it, the statue is Shiva, and she is the destroyer. And she is, in this pose, she is dancing the dance of destruction. That's what, that, that's what Hindu uh, lore says she's doing. She's the destroyer, and the, the legend of the Hindus is that Shiva destroyed the universe and then rebuilt it. Now, that's kind of interesting. Now, the reason why they have this, huh, well, I have my idea about why they have this. I think Satan is ultimately behind a lot of things. 
but India actually as a gift to CERN. Back when they got set up, India chose this and gave this to them as a gift. Like we have the Statue of Liberty. Okay, perfectly reasonable, rational, a Hindu country. But it makes you go, what? Again, another thing that is almost beyond interesting. So here's the symbol, the logo for CERN. Again, this is a thing that you can't build a doctrine on, but it's really very interesting. And they'll give you reasons for why it was developed as the logo that it is. But let me just throw this out. You do with it what you want to. This is potentially, you could see it as a series of sixes. And further, in, in, in mysticism, in witchcraft and the like, they do things by reversing and turning upside down. And, and they, put the, they put the thing out there reversed upside down, and it's in plain sight, but only for those who know what to look for. Okay, this is a series of sixes. I heard it described as six, 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 but it's not actually that. There are more than three sixes there. Okay, but that doesn't mean that's not what's in mind. Six is the number of man. I count five, either nines or sixes, which nine is a reverse six, right? So in, in mysticism, this is the thing they kind of love to do. Put it out there. And nobody but the ones who know what they're looking for can see it. So five, I know what the biblical number five is. Five is the number of grace because something died. Okay, you, you go talk to preachers and read books about bi biblical num numerics and, and you look up five and most of them don't go any farther than five is the number of grace. And it's true. But in every instance when five pops up in the Bible and grace is bestowed, it's because something died. Go into a whole bunch of illustrations. Jesus on the cross, how many, how many marks were there on his body? There were five. By his body, his death, we have grace. So there's just something very interesting about that. Further, just one more coincidental, interesting thing that makes you go, hmm. WWW, right? Universal language of the internet. Connects the whole world. We've got one language, and it's really the only language for which you can communicate with anybody in the world over the internet, WWW. Well, the W in Hebrew is actually a Vav. A, a, the V is the W. And every one of the Hebrew letters is also the way they do their numbers. You know, if you, if you want to write a number, you actually pick from the alphabet, and that's how you write the numbers. Well, the Hebrew W is the value of six. The collider, the Hadron Collider, is the largest machine ever built by man. The Tower of Babel was built to reach up to heaven. Okay? There's nothing conclusive in all this. It's just very interesting. Maybe there's nothing there. Or maybe the devil's real. What do you think? So, there are... I'm sorry. There are experiments. You can go to there. I'll, I'll give you the the uh, the site that you can go and check some of this out for yourself. You don't need to take my opinion for it. Uh, I'll deny it anyway. Uh, the Large Hadron Accelerator or uh, Collider goes by both things. They're doing experiments, right? They've designed different experiments that they're doing. And here's a picture of their web page of the experiments, okay? Again, nothing conclusive, but isn't it interesting that one of the experiments is called Atlas? 
Now, Atlas was the guy in Greek mythology that held up the universe, held up the world, held up the universe on his shoulders. Alice, and I haven't had the time to check into it in a great deal of detail, but Alice is somehow connected with uh, mystical witchcraft, uh, that whole devilish world. I don't know what it is, but it did make me think, you know, there was a guy who was all about the devil while he was playing his rock music. Cooper? Yeah. Yeah. Alice Cooper. Yeah. Uh huh. Alice is now a Christian, although. Wow, that's really confusing. Yeah. Exactly. Alice was never an Alice. He was always a guy. But, of course, he was trying to be, you know, that kind of weird back then. That was the whole point of it. The weirder you could get, the more you could get, you know, uh, advertisement. And so, anyway, there's Alice and Atlas and then Totem. We all know Totem. So, it, it just seems like these sophisticated scientists have some kind of an aversion towards these mystical things. <clears throat> Maybe you could just make the argument, and they probably would. Well, you know, uh, science really comes from the Greeks, and so from Greek mythology we pick these names and they become acronyms for this. Okay, I'm not making it, I'm not building a doctrine on this, I'm just saying this is just kind of interesting. Now we've got four or five or six interesting things around this is kind of like the Clintons. You get enough dead bodies and pretty soon you begin to wonder if you want to be around this guy. <laughs> Any thoughts before we move on? Okay. I can see you're all just going, hmm. <coughs> so, now I want to go to the book of uh, Revelation and kind of look at our Bible study tonight. I've looked at the book of Revelation in a different way. There are a lot of different ways to study the book of Revelation. If you want to understand it, you need to do it from a dispensational understanding. That is, you've got seven churches in chapter 2 and 3, letters to seven churches. That's the church dispensation. Right after that, you've got John caught up to heaven. There's the rapture. And then you enter into a seven-year period of tribulation. And so dispensationally, is the only way the uh, book of Revelation makes any sense to me. But there's another way of looking at it. And I want to do that tonight just to see it in a little bit different way. And I can tell we're not going to get done, so we're just going to get started. Revelation chapter 1, verse 2, and verse 9. And these are going to be seven plus, we've actually got eight, of these announcements, these warnings, these big announcements angels and others make about judgment. And this really, this really comes, though I didn't get it from there, at least maybe it was in the back of my mind, the book The Harbingers by Jonathan Kahn. He discovered a simple little truth in the Bible that every time God brings judgment, He always brings a shaking. He always gives a warning. Multiple of them Read the book of Harbinger, and the Harbinger 2 is out now. Well, so that's kind of the concept that I'm going for here. These announcements are made just before destruction comes. John says it in Revelation 1, 2, and 9. So this is being introduced. John's saying, I'm writing this. And he says in verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all these things that he saw. Now here's my point. Don't miss it because this sets it up for all the rest of it. And it tells you what we do because of the study that we're doing about prophecy in times and what's going on around us. What do you do about all that? This is what John did. He gave testimony. Have you given any testimony lately? If things are really shaping up the way that we all agree when we do this study, it's all very interesting and exciting to study the newspaper and the prophecy and, and look at them together and see it, it's, it's amazing. But Adrian Rogers, I think it was, said years ago, he said, any study in prophecy 
that does not lead to evangelism is an exercise in futility. Now think about time. that. Pardon? Say that one more time. Any study in prophecy that does not cause you to become a soul winner, does not energize you in evangelism, is a waste of time. Now, you've got, you've got preachers who that's all they do. Yeah. I mean, they're obsessed with that. And if it does not lead to souls, if it does not lead to evangelism, it was just so much the most interesting thing at the moment for me to get into. Like golf or, you know, whatever, whatever tickles people's fancy. Well, there's a lot of prophecy buffs that, that, that that's why they do it. Because it's interesting. The, the reason why God put it in the Bible was to motivate you that judgment is coming. You need to tell people. That's what John did. And in verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos because of the word of God for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Would verse 9 describe your life? Would it describe my life? Does all my excitement about prophecy lead me to an urgency to tell people that they're doomed? Sorry to get so convicting. Secondly, chapter 6. All these are in Revelation. Chapter 6. By those who are slain. Chapter 6, verse 11. I'm sorry, verse 6. Oh, I can't even read. Verse 9 through 11. And when he opened the fifth seal, now we're into the tribulation. Tribulation has begun. And when he opened the fifth seal... I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Again, testimony. Would that describe my Christian walk today? The way these, they died because of their testimony. They died for the word of God. They died because they told people they're doomed. And God said, not quite yet. There are some others who are going to die for that same reason. So there's going to be people in the tribulation who are going to give testimony. And because of their commitment to the word of God and tell people they're doomed, they're going to die. Would that describe my evangelistic efforts because of the prophecy that I've been studying? Okay. Next, chapter 11, the two witnesses. Chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 1. So we're well into the prophet, into the tribulation period. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Okay, he's talking about the rebuilt temple, I believe. And it's going to be trampled down by the times of the Gentile, by the Gentiles. And verse 3, 
And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of all the earth. And if any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, before we go further, we have an indication here of who these two witnesses are because of what they do in verse 6. The only indication I know. There's two guys who their ministry was not concluded here on earth, but it was cut short. And these two guys did these two things. One guy had the power to shut heaven. That was Elijah. His ministry was cut short, I think because of his whining and complaining, his depression, and God took him in the whirlwind, right? The second guy was able to bring where he could turn water into blood and smite the earth with plagues. Who are we talking about? Moses. Moses' ministry was cut short as well because of his sin. He wasn't able to go into the promised land because of that. He was able to look over into it, but he couldn't go into it. God didn't let him. God took his life. And he buried him in secret to this day. So here are these two witnesses. And this is what they, what's a witness do? A witness gives testimony. That's what all these things are. All of these seven things plus one more are going to be about testimonies, warnings, harbingers to come. And verse 8, and their dead bodies shall, uh, wait a minute, verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, CERN, the Hydron Collider? Hmm. You know, it's interesting that that does sit on a place where the ancients believed. There's just an ancient's belief that that was a place where it was a portal into Hades. Hmm. Interestinger and interestinger. And so they're going to be killed because they gave testimony and God finally allowed it. And then verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. That's uh, cryptically saying three and a half years. Now, that's a long time for bodies to lay out there. That sounds sort of supernatural. Anyway, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. See, that was a, a curse of the ancients. If you didn't bury somebody, that, that was a curse. But then it really gets interesting. In verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And if there's ever a moment when I would love to go and be a fly on the wall, this is it. And after three and a half uh, days, three and a half years, second half of the tribulation, the spirit of life, capital S, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. It's eight o'clock. So I'm going to have to leave you with that cliffhanger. These two guys were dead three and a half years, and they stand up. The people, the earth dwellers, as they're called in Revelation, over and over and over, those who have dwelt upon the earth, that's not us. This is not our home. Amen? Amen. Those who dwelt upon the earth are going to rejoice. They're going to send each other gifts because these two guys are dead. That's what they think of Christians right now who say LGBT is sin, who say uh, adultery is sin, who, who they hate us that same way. 
These two witnesses are going to stand up. Wouldn't that be awesome to see the blood drain from their face? Not the witnesses, but the earth dwellers. Well, so we'll leave it right 